to take the second or third frame out first and not the outside frame. A lot of the time you'll have a lot of burr comb on the outside wall, which if you drag this frame out first, you've got a one in 10 chance and your you'll kill it. on there. So the first thing we do is use your hive tool in an overhand position and we spread the frames and break any of that bridging comb. Once you're confident that you've given yourself enough room, you hook one end up, place a finger under, hook the other end up, and it just rests there. And then when you lift, you must not feel any resistance. Feeling weight is okay, probably means that it's got some honey in it, but feeling weight is different to feeling resistance. If you feel it dragging at all, you place it back in and start again. So on the outside here, we've got brood frame carriers, which is what we'll use to arrange our brood. If any brood frames I want to keep in our brood super, I place on the carrier closest to me. Any brood that I want to lift, it may be honey, pollen or sealed brood if I'm building up bee numbers, I'll place on the brood frame carrier furthest from me. It's an easy way to arrange, and it also helps you keep an eye out for that queen without having them stuck on the ground, you don't risk ants and other things. So first things first, I'm using the sunlight to get the bomb to cell and I'm going to assess, first of all, if, if we've got eggs in a queen. I'm going to look at bee numbers, how much brood we've got, how much seal brood. I'll check these, these play cells and if they're just play cells, I'll destroy them. But if they're queen cells, it'll mean something else altogether, which will change my plan of attack. But that's just a play cell, so I've just destroyed it. So in this first frame here, I'm analyzing, looking in the sun, and I'm seeing spots of seal brood, but she's certainly not working this side of the of the hive. So there's quite a lot of empty cells there, so I'm gonna place it on this side for the moment. Next, I'm gonna check the outside frame. Give yourself some room. As I pull this up, same thing. I can see plenty of bees, which is good. It proves that our amalgamation was successful. However, I'm still looking for eggs to make sure that my queen that I added in last week has made it for seven days. She was in full lay when she went in, so I haven't found any just yet. Although, of course, you've got seal brood, but all these cells are polished and ready for her to lay in. She's not up to it yet. So perhaps I'll, I'll find eggs closer to the middle or further on the other side. But a lot of mature drones as well. Okay, third frame in. You start to look a bit better. And especially when you see the queen yourself. There's the queen. That's when you know that you've got a lot, um, you know that she's fine. So one of our um, safe handling techniques for working with bees is that when we see a, a queen, we simply cage her immediately. So here's our queen cage, cork nails and a hair curler. And I can simply, if you're confident enough not to squash her, you can grab her and place her in the queen cage. Hold it up, because she likes to crawl up. And then boom, she's sealed. And you place this on the landing board. If it's a 35 degree day, be careful not to leave her in the sun there for too long. However, she's safe there because she can be fed through the cage and um, she'll be quite happy when you return her. It's good too, this uh, frame has um, all been laid up and it's all sealed brew and I can tell it's quite fresh comb. This was um, only a partly draw frame from last week and I'm definitely gonna keep that downstairs because I've still got more work to do on it. So I'll place it over here. That's three frames over here, now I'm onto my fourth. You can see I'm not using much smoke. That can depend on the time of day, but most of all, um, and the mood of your bees, but most of all it's about the genetics. So a quiet bee shouldn't need much smoke and they're, they're a pleasure to work. If you've got to be constantly smoking your bees, it might be time to look at changing your queen. Once again, I'm looking into the sunlight there. You can see plenty, I'm, I'm seeing plenty of bees and I can see eggs laid throughout, which means that she's, she's gotten right off, off to a good start towards the middle of this. If you want to have a really close look, now that we've found the queen, place your frame inside. If you've got room, you can put it on the angle a touch, but usually this is enough, and you give it a quick shake. And that'll clear the bees off, for enough time for you to have a quick look, and make sure that any of this seal brood here, I saw, I saw this little hole here, and you can see there's actually a bee hatching out of it, which is a good sign. If that was instead uh, something else, it could either be chalk brood or American fowl brood disease or any other, any other problem, but in this case, this is just, this is the last of the hatching bees. And same, same here. An example of a frame that's no good in the brood chamber is one with a bow in it. 
Now when I say a bow, I'm not talking about a bow in the cappings, I'm talking about a bow in the foundation. You see how this foundation is quite deep here? And then here, it's quite shallow. Which means on this side, you've got an indent. That renders those cells pretty much useless to the queen. And in effect, you're reducing your, your um, holding capacity of eggs for that queen to lay. So your, your population isn't as high as it could be. You can correct that in certain combs, and they can repair it. But a lot of the times when they're getting on an age like this, the best thing is to do is to remove it to the honey super. So that one goes in the farther side because I'm going to remove it. And then I simply repeat the process. If I'm ever in doubt um, about a cell, I'll shake the bees off and have a closer look. And I can just simply go through and check the rest of the frames. To cast your eyes over the next frame. That way you're essentially looking at one and a half frames at a time. And if you've missed her on the frame you've got in your hand, and if she's here, quite often the white dot, if she's marked, will be quite apparent on the angle that you look down. Quite often you'll find a queen by looking down on that next frame. If you don't see her there, then you go back to the frame in your hand and have a look. Stay one step ahead of yourself. Okay, placing frames back in. I've now gone to a point where my brood frame carriers in this side are full, and I've got three over here. So it's time for me to start putting frames back inside the brood, brood super, um, ready to put the hive back together. So as I go through, I'll look, and if I see eggs or young larva, I will simply place them in the middle. That'll then free up my, my frames to examine. This one here is more of sealed brood and semi-sealed larva. So I can put that one a little bit further out. That one there is quite a lot of sealed brood, so I'll place it on the outside. And if you're going to lift up four frames, you want to leave positions two and three available for your new frames. But that's described more in the actual brood lift process. Now to free it up completely, this one here I'll also put towards the outside. And that then frees up my brood frame carriers to examine the last three cell, uh, last three frames for any cells of interest. So that may be disease, uh, how much larvae I've got capped, how many eggs she's laying, whether it's clogged with pollen, and so forth. Now that one there is completely laid up. I can see that all the larva hatchlings there and lots of bees doing their job. I'll place that one right in the middle, back where it was. So, of course, whenever I'm going through any brood chamber I'm always looking for signs of disease okay during the pupae stage is usually when they die of American fowl brood disease and so forth so I always have a close look and make sure that my cappings are always concave there's no sunken cappings and there's no pinholes we go through that more in in um, detail in, in disease checks but remember a full disease check is only when you actually shake off every bee off every frame and check for disease. In this circumstance, we are looking out for disease, but I wouldn't classify what I'm doing here as a full disease check. You've got to be able to keep your finger on that pulse, as Brother Adam would say. You must make sure that when you do a full disease check, you shake every bee off every frame. That one there is perfectly sealed brood, so I'll turn that around. The most sealed brood to the outside. Now, I have clearly left over three frames that I want to remove from the brood, brood super and three spaces for the frames to go in for brood lifts. And for the last frame, if you find that they're a little bit tight in your brood super um, and your queen is safe and secure, you can find that you can actually use your frame to space them. So if you place it in nice and level and you simply push the frames with your current frame and it'll make room. It's a very easy way, doesn't disturb the bees and you don't have to reach, reach in um, elbow deep with a hive tool. Whenever we're closing up a brood super, we always push all the frames together. This will ensure you have a nice warm cluster. It'll also reduce the amount of drone comb that they tend to build at the top because they're all close together. Once you're happy with that, the queen is still safe at the front. So as this brood super belongs to a triple honey hive, we simply then place the excluder on and then we put our other two supers back on top. You'll notice this video, we worked the brood super, 10 frames, and if you didn't have two honey supers on top, you'd notice there was no honey in the brood super. If this was a single hive, you have to have honey down there for them to survive. 
But because we've got these two supers above, we're able to hold a full 10 frames of brood eggs and larva downstairs, which enables a strong production hive for honey. To release her, we simply shake the bees off the outside of the cage, open the top up, and at a 45 degree angle, place the entrance at the landing board. She crawls straight out and in, and make sure that you give them a few pops of smoke. In case there's a wall of bees hanging here, she might actually change her mind and turn around and get, go, go back onto the ground and get in my ants. And also, if you've got a full production hive and you've got bees, after you've blown a super of bees out, you may have bees, have bees bearded all the way up along the front here when they return. You've got to be careful that if you don't smoke her in, she may just crawl back out and up the top. And if you've still got that lid off, she'll crawl on your top super and she'll be in there before you know it. Please like, subscribe and click the bell to my channel to help it grow. Thanks for watching. Thank you.